Welcome to our November edition of Chamber Chat. And with me today is Keith G with uh, the Children's Hunger Project. So we're very excited to have you on. Uh, we saw that Tommy Meccarello has already signed in and there was another one who we lost uh, their name, but I'm sure it'll come up. Oh, Marty. Okay. And uh, so we appreciate having you on with us. So just before we get started, I want to go over a few things with the Chamber just to give you an update on uh, some of the upcoming events. So this is going to be a busy week after Thanksgiving. So on Tuesday, we have our Brevard Business Professionals. That's at Red Ginger. And we appreciate Grace with Red Ginger hosting our event there. So it was very nice. And David Brubaker from the Sharing Center of Brevard is going to be sharing his experience. Um, another nonprofit organization that at this time of the year, it's kind of perfect because um, they are always in need of their pantry being filled and um, it's it's been a really tough year I think uh, they had that call out in the middle of the summer that their pantry was was getting bare so um, so he'll be talking to us uh, about his experience and then we have a five-star claims adjuster uh, adjusting is our sponsor for that so that is on Tuesday from 8 to 9 30 Wednesday is our celebration so here's our lovely little invitation and it is the Chamber's 30th anniversary celebration. So it's hard to believe the Chamber's 30 years old. I think it's 30 since I got here, but um, <laughs> that's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're kind of, we're, we're honoring the past and the present, what's happening, but we're really, you know, looking to the future, the growth and development of South Brevard County. The um, City of Palm Bay is a, is a great sponsor for that because really when you see everything that's kind of, the development that's going on and things that are happening, we really want to um, honor that and, and celebrate what's what the future is going to hold for everyone. And I think for a lot of business owners, it's it's kind of nice to hear what's um, what's in the cards. We're going to have uh, pictures. Uh, scrapbooks from things that we've done in the past but we're also uh, showcasing a lot of the development that's going to be happening and it's going to be a fun night it's not one of those uh, we'll be installing our board but we really are having um, a great celebration so we've got a four day no four night five day rental from giant recreation world so you can buy raffle tickets for that and we're going to have a balloon pop with it so you never know if your balloon's going to have that lucky you are a winner inside of it but um i've always wanted to try that i thought our bean would be a fun yeah. you know fun and this just kind of gives you the four days or five days uh four nights to be able to um get different there's a different size so you know if you need a smaller one or a larger one um i guess when i think of rvs i always think 32 feet long and to me that just seems massive but they have the smaller ones so uh you know that you're able to drive in and sleep in the back of them so so that's kind of exciting so that's on wednesday and it's just at banyan estates off of malabar road it's on marie street it's the old schoolhouse it's beautiful inside and kind of will be appropriate because i'll bring that up when we talk about event planning and then the next day on on thursday is our new member orientation we had to move it over a day so if you have never come to our new member orientation please come you don't have to be a new member we go over the entire packet what's included in membership uh, we talk about um, networking we have a new app so how to utilize your app and um, be connected to the chamber so that's 3 30 to 5 sponsored by TD Bank so we appreciate our trustee and so we'll um, go over any questions that you have and it's a great way to network with the new new members and then finally and this one's really cool um, on the Friday so let me show our little flyer uh, yeah, um, it's hard to see, but what's on that is uh, it's our very last Where's the Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce. So we've been doing that. We've tried quarterly this year um, to see a, a unique and behind the scenes of different places. So we got to go up um, and see the air the new air traffic control tower at um, Orlando Melbourne International Airport. We were able to do a tour of the Palm Bay Hospital. And this is a tour of Palm Bay Fire Station 1. So it's on Port Malabar Road. And then we go from there over to Eastern Florida State College. It's about five minutes away. And they have a tactical fire training facility. They're going to do a simulated car fire and then um, how the fire department does a fire rescue. So I Did think you tell them they can't use my car for that? Uh, oh, okay. I, I did not do that disclaimer. I said, Keith is volunteering. He has a car. He needs on fire. So uh, an insurance money. No. Um, 
no, they, they, it's simulated. Um, but yeah, it, the whole tactical area looks really, um, really neat. And um, if you've not, and I've never been there before, it's, it's kind of an experience. So we, it took us a while to get that coordinated. So we're really excited with the Palm Bay Fire Department that were able to do that for us. And then our last luncheon of the year is on December 5th. It's at the Life Care Center. We have Matt Winter and he's with MF. MFS Investment Management and Edward Jones, Kevin Chancellor was sponsoring that. And this is kind of looking at the year uh, the stock market has been up and down and up and down. And it was a crazy year. So he's going to be speaking a bit about really the year that's passed, but looking to the future as well, what 2019 might hold. Um, and it's our chance to kind of celebrate as well. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And the one, uh, we have a ribbon cutting that day as well, edible arrangements. If you have not bought all your Christmas presents or want a really nice gift, I have to tell you, Anna does an amazing job with edible arrangements. They have, oh, they're chocolate covered apple slices that have caramel inside as well. Okay, that's dangerous. They have chocolate covered <laughs> pineapple. I mean, everything they have is is amazing. Um, but it's kind of nice because I think sometimes at this time we get, you know, you get pumpkin hideout, you know, you're all over the turkey. And then sometimes you don't know what to buy either uh, business associates or family members that have everything. So this is your opportunity to give something nice with that edible arrangement. So we'll look forward to the ribbon cutting. Um, and there's the Palm Bay Light Parade. And that's on the 1st. It's December 1st. It's Saturday. And it's 6.30 to 9.30. So we're looking to have a, a chamber vehicle. Again, this year, we're not the exciting ones. Everybody has really cool floats. And we just have really our car with the top down. And we wave at everyone. But, you know, it, it's so fun. And it gets you in the holiday spirit. So we're definitely participating. Oh, chair stuck. Participating in that again. So that's really our calendar of events for the next, uh, well, I guess two weeks really is all it is. It's hard to believe. Um, Keith, what do you have? Do you have something coming up that you want to share with everyone? Uh, yeah, actually on uh, Saturday, December 8th, we're doing a free community open house for everyone. Um, the reason we're doing that is we connected with somebody that is really passionate about barbecuing. They've got a big grill. They've got they so they're buying all it's a group of realtors and friends and they're gonna buy all the meat and grill up burgers and dogs and make wow. homemade uh, potato salad so <clears throat> then they're like well we just need people to come and eat so oh okay we yeah, just that's invite right. <laughs> invite people up to our office in coco um and then we're gonna make it a community open house so we've got a fire truck coming for an hour okay. we've got two police dogs we've got somebody doing bal uh, balloon animals nice. just family friendly nice. Uh, fun activities and then people can get a tour of our facility oh good and just kind of good. see that we're not packing food or anything that day but just get a, a sure. feel for okay. what we do okay um, and just saying thank you to all our friends with free food so oh well that sounds awesome and and what time is it again uh, it's from 11 to 2 okay. we're actually doing a ribbon cut at uh, noon with all four okay. chambers so I'm uh -huh. really excited about so that. join us all we have to get that on the calendar I just noticed that was not on there so um, I'll get that added yeah I could see good job you're here yeah. um, <laughs> so we'll add that I know it's gone out but I it's just not on our calendar so I'll make sure we get that added on so then I think that'll be really exciting because um, I have not seen your facility every time there's a pack it doesn't well with the groups that are organizing it I can't make it so I am very excited to see your facility because I hear nothing but really good things about it. So thank you. Oh, okay. So now we have our topic today. And uh, today we are looking at events and event planning. We, um, our lovely title is event planning for success. And I think you and I have both been involved with a number of events. Um, whether you're planning an event where really it's just, uh, a training, you know, if you're um, a realtor or a financial planner and you're looking to have an event, it, it's an event. It doesn't matter if it's two people coming or it's 2,000 people, it's an event. And so we're kind of talking about some of the tips and, and things that we've learned over the years to help make things successful. And I think one of the things to um, recognize is that you know, sometimes it gets frustrating because for some events you can spend a very long time on them and it, either you don't have the turnout that you expect or the money that you expect. And um, it's it can be 
it can be frustrating or, or just kind of sad. You think that you did all that work. Um, but, you know, you have to think that you learn from, you know, our, our mistakes um, and not be afraid to fail because then you'll never try anything new. If you never try uh, to have a different event or change things up, um, you're, you're eventually going to go downhill anyway because um, if you're just coasting, then you're going downhill. So, uh, so yeah, you know, and, and go in with that mindset. I mean, yes, we all want to be successful. Absolutely. We have goals and objectives and our budgets and that. But, you know, you have to um, think outside the box and try and look at some things that are a little different and um, engage the members that are coming or people that are coming to your event. So. And I, I love the topic of this because mm -hmm. I think it's important to determine what success looks like before you go into yes. this event so yes. you know in my world if it's a fundraising event it's all about the money right, right. it just has okay. to be right. but um you know even board meetings are, are a, an event that i have to plan for <laughs> and yes. i always kind of have a, a an idea of what i want to have come out of that, that meeting right um you you mentioned you know trainings like what what is it that you're expecting is, is attendance really important for this meeting? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, then we need to get the word out, we need to advertise if it's something else. I love um, ribbon cuttings for the chambers because yes. for a business, what do I need? I need people to be exposed to my business. So right. bring people there, the, the chamber always does such a great job. Mm -hmm. It's free, so it doesn't cost me a lot of money. Right. Yet they're gonna put the word out and just getting the name of your business out in front of you know hundreds and hundreds of people. Right. Right. Um, whether they come or not, they see it on the calendar, yes, they see it advertised. Right. Um, yeah. So it, it's just name recognition. So right. I love those. Right. Um, and that can be something really easy too. Like it, it can be as, mm -hmm. as big as you want it or mm -hmm. as, as small as you really need to keep it. So, you know, food wise and stuff, you can really manage a budget that's, that's reasonable and get some good exposure. Well, I think too, with you having a whole barbecue and giving free food, I mean, that's going to knock it out of the park. You know, that's always free food, you know, oh, okay, we'll be there. Yeah. Um, and, and you have to look at what are some of the keys to an excess, uh, successful ribbon cutting. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, the chamber will just market it for them. But it doesn't work that way. It, it really is. We will get the word out. We invite our um, elected officials and our, our city um, employees. We send that out, um, it goes to all our members, but you know what, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're able, all able to come. And so it's important for the business as well to market to their customers, um, their friends and family. And I mean, really, if it's a new business, those are the most important people anyway. You know, it's nice that the chamber comes, we do the, you know, get the picture and, and get that out there. But really, you're celebrating your business. So having your friends and family and working around that date is, I think, the most important. Um, but lots of notice is always key too, because sometimes, you know, they think, oh, well, if I tell you today, can we have it next once? And like, yeah. okay, yeah, you can have it. I'm not sure who's going to make <laughs> it, but, uh, you know, um, so yeah, trying to be a little bit more, um, you know, really plan it, put some thought into it. And I think that's what we're going to talk about today. And you're right. Sometimes if it's a fundraiser, absolutely, you know, you're looking at the money, but sometimes awareness is also key because if people have never heard about you and they come to your fundraiser, um, you never know what that will translate into. That's how I got my last job was I went to one of their luncheons and um, wasn't in my wheelhouse at all. It wasn't, you know, one of those causes that I thought, oh yeah, I need to get involved. I just, oh, they're having the lunch. Well, let's go. And and we're 14 years later. So um, <laughs> that's, how it works. that's how it works. So yeah, so that's why, you know, knowing what your objective is, is, is really important. Um, but they did a study. So and it said, talking about success, the best indicator of success. So for 48% of the respondents, they said attendee satisfaction. So that was their number one thing. I'll say the different ones that is here, and then we can talk about um, the different uh, categories. So we can talk about how you can manage those. The second was uh, your spend against revenue. So you want to, as you said, make some money and not owe. Um, that's a big one. Um, engagement, uh, you know, with, with people that come. Number of leads generated. So for some, and a lead doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you're going out for sales, but it could be for you, like a lead for somebody who wants to get involved with the children or Children's Hunger Project, might want to come pack, might want to donate. I mean, there's a number of different type of leads you're looking for. And then other was the other category. So, um, so let's kind of talk about um, content because 
you know, planning an event is, is always a challenge. What are you going to do and how are we not going to bore everybody? Uh, you know, and that's one of the reasons why with this anniversary celebration, we're doing it in, not in January, like normally all the installations are in January. We didn't want to do all the awards together. We didn't want to have where um, it's a whole night of people coming up, getting a plaque, we take a picture and the whole audience is like, okay, when is this over, you know? Um, so we'll be installing the board, but we wanted to have some fun things like the balloon drop. Uh, we have a silent auction. Um, we have, you know, like I said, looking at the past and the future. So kind of highlighting some of that. We have a number of our past board chairs that are coming. So um, honoring them and, and past board members and, and just some of the, even a founder is coming. So that's pretty wow. cool to have something, you know, and, and that's taking the time to think, how are we going to run this, this event? Um, because if it's one of those where, let's say like the symposium, content was really important. I mean, that was an event about the space program. We had the military um, panel, you know, uh, and there was five Fortune 500 companies looking at what content, what we wanted people to walk away with, what was going to be important and putting the right people together because, you know, I was working with uh, Joe Mayer from Lockheed Martin and I said, well, does this make sense? Does this make sense? And he was kind of giving some guidance because that really is his area. So, but taking the time to do that, uh, making sure if you're getting the keynote speaker, it's going to be relevant to the people that are coming. Uh, making sure that if you're, um, you know, like I said, putting the program together, that it's, it, it's, it makes sense. It's going to be smooth and it's not going to be uh, really boring. I remember speaking with Jim and I won't say his last name and he said if I have to go to another function where I'm about to fall asleep and my marketing manager has to nudge me to keep me away and I said you know this doesn't have to be that way it can be fun I mean you know how do we incorporate having a good time with you know what we're trying to do or the cause that you have uh, you know I think of um, the lip sync battle that Brevard Family Partnership has, and talk about fun events. The Dancing for the Space Coast is a fun one. A dude looks like a lady. You know, when you're getting people engaged and sometimes out of their comfort zone, uh, you can really have a lot of fun and um, engage people. But if it's a business function, well, obviously you're not going to be doing. Well, and I think you know, there's, I think there's ways to make even like a training, you know, for insurance agents or something, or or a business meeting. Um, maybe not necessarily like as entertaining as some of those like dude looks like a lady right. and dancing with the stars but right. but impactful and meaningful for the people that you're that you're having there so mm -hmm. if it's a training you got to think about your target audience yes. how to get them there mm -hmm. and then once they're there how you're going to get engagement from them to right. to pay attention and you know sometimes for realtors and and insurance agents i know they have to do like community or a continuing right. education, education credits yes. Yes. so they have to be there right but you yes. still want yes. them to get something yes. out of it so i think targeting to your your uh, target audience what they would want to get out of it and how you're going to present that sometimes it's better to do a powerpoint um and you know if you're dealing with a lot right. of numbers yes. and stuff yes. sometimes it's better to have a face-to-face -face present presenter just there talking about you know telling stories or uh you know something like that to get started the other two things that you've already kind of mentioned <clears throat> but i wanted to touch on more was just getting started picking a date and a location are so key yes um there yes. are so many events in brevard county just fundraising events but yes. other events yes. too yes so finding you know if you're looking for a weekend date where there's no competition for events in brevard county you're never right. going to find it right <laughs> events every weekend yes. Yes. Um, so you just got to pick and choose your battles, look for right. the big events and try to yes. stay away from them. Yes. But then again, the location, I think, can be key too. Absolutely. If you're, you know, if you're really looking for a certain audience to come, mm -hmm. finding something that's attractive to them. Right. You know, maybe it's, some people are just looking for more of an upscale yes. location. So right. that's where you're going to have to put some of your money. Right. Yes. Some yes. people um, could literally need in the back room of a chamber office and be comfortable and it, looks it looks great um but so it, it just um i i think choosing lo location and yes. something accessible something people can find easily right um you know your uh 
your anniversary party next uh, Wednesday is awesome because yeah. it's probably something that a lot of people haven't been to. Right. And so yes. I'm intrigued just to, to be able to say that I'm going there because I can get a chance to see it and you get a tour. Or, yes, you know, it's, it's, it's lovely. And it's an old school house. So they've renovated inside. It has the wood floors, chandeliers, um, and then it's got all the grounds around it. It's got a wrap around driveway. So we're having valet parking. Nice. Um, we'll have the lights the city is putting up there because it's a little dark on Malabar Road. For those <laughs> of you that haven't driven down Malabar, not a lot of street lights. So, so we'll have people out there directing and, and making sure that, um, you know, you don't have to worry. And we thought with ladies in their heels and, you know, cause it's kind of like cocktail dress and stuff. So you don't want to be trotting through, um, you know, the grounds and they have a lot of parking, but that's the thing is making sure that there's, a lot of space for everyone so yeah we wanted something and something a little more elegant because it's a 30th anniversary celebration i think at the coco chamber and they had theirs um at kennedy space center under atlantis you know talk about a fabulous venue um just beautiful um you know so every every event is different and in titusville actually they did their longest table so they were out in the middle of the street walked off a street and had you know 200 people having dinner together um up in titusville so you know i think that's really kind of cool uh different you know yeah. different things that that yeah. they've done so so you're right i think venue is really important and then you know thinking of dates it we all kind of go in this season right you know we kind of it fall starts getting heavier and heavier and then january february march is like crazy time in April uh, because they kind of look at the snowbirds in that and a lot of them are people that are generous that will donate so you kind of wanted to have them if it's if it's a nonprofit type of thing for the business community not so much because that's not their target market so um, but you also have to take into account summer when people go on vacation um, holidays uh, you know unfortunately ours well, not unfortunately, but sometimes our monthly luncheon, it's the first Wednesday of every month. Well, it could be right after July 4th. And you know, that whole week is, can be shot. Right. So, you know, we do it the next week after that. Um, we've had our Brevard business professionals last Tuesday of every month. Well, sometimes that's right after, you know, a long weekend too. So, you know, looking at when you hold events is, is really quite important because, um, your turnout definitely will be affected if there's something else going on and and checking some of the websites um everything brevard.com is a great one destination brevard is another good one the um, chamber website the chamber oh yes I'm, well that goes without saying <laughs> oh, but yes i should have said that first the chamber <laughs> website um yeah because you want to make sure that you're not going you know like you don't want to go up against jazoo or right. you know one of those where you had Right. And Brevard is at it so right. um, that's that's kind of the thing that you you really want to avoid and especially for smaller um, nonprofits it can be a real challenge if they choose that date and then they're kind of locked in and yeah. then one of these big yeah. the big ones come in yeah. Um, so yeah you, you well and you know, oftentimes you have to put a deposit down on yes, the venue yes so you do have to lock in early yes, um, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it, it's tough because there are so many events every weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, there are. We were uh, yeah just talking about some this weekend, and you're thinking, okay, Thanksgiving, who's doing that? But yep, there's still <laughs> there's still stuff going yes. on. Um, so that's one of the important ones is is when it'll take place. I think really from the start, the first thing you should be looking at is really why you're doing that event. Yep. You know, the reason for it, um, what the purpose is, what you're trying to accomplish. We kind of mentioned mm -hmm. that a bit, but we're like, really, you know, if, if there's a takeaway, if you're doing a training, you know, what are you hoping the attendees will walk away with? Because then that changes how you plan it and it changes um, usually where you're going to have it because if you want it hands-on and people are bringing their laptops and then you know you need an environment that's going to be conducive for that if that's yeah. not as important then you know you really want to look at the objectives and and why you're having that event because man you can event yourself out and if it's not for the re you know and the, you know boards oh why don't we just have another fundraiser and you're like oh yeah. that's not um you know you looking at what the purpose is um and having a chair because if you don't have a chairperson for it uh it's going to be really difficult um you know uh the, the chamber's a little bit different you know we have um 
people that actually work for the chamber. Whereas with most nonprofits, you don't have that, or you might not have a huge team. And sure, they're expected to make it happen, but you know, you want to make sure that you have a chairperson that's going to be supportive and get the word out. I think of Sandy Mickelson with the Zonta Club, you know, the chocolate festival, that woman goes out and talks about it to everybody and, you know, is highly invested in that event. And that chair is so important. Their personality, their contacts, yes. they can make or break an event, just that yes. single person. So yeah, huge. Yeah. Yeah, really big. Um, and we were talking about dates, so um, making sure that uh, you're not competing with others. And and if you are doing it around somebody, kind of like getting the speaker or somebody like the sheriff, I mean, you know that man, he is at everything. So working around his schedule, making, you know, getting your date far enough in advance so that you can get somebody. If you are paying for a, a keynote speaker, some of them have very high speaking fees and you need to get on their calendar almost at the beginning of the year because they plan out their entire engagements for the year. So um, that's important as well. Um, and then getting into, uh, let's see, some of the, um, some of the pre, the pre things to think about, because one of the worst things, and sometimes we have difficulty with this just because, you know, I'm challenged with technology, but, um, you know, is making sure it's pain free to get people to register or for the event. You know, we look at things and, and you can have somebody double check it, but triple checking it, having an other set of eyes on it. I've seen cards that didn't have the date of the event, didn't have the cost of the event, didn't have where it was, um, you know, it missed their logo, like they were having what the event was, but didn't say who the event was for. Um, those are really important things that it's amazing how many of us can miss that. And you think, I've looked at this 95 times, how did I not see that? And, you know, it can happen. So, uh, so you want people to be able to get all that information quickly and make sure that when they're registering, uh, you're making it painless too, because I think it's, you know, one or two clicks and they're done now. Yeah. Um, you know, except I was trying to get Hamilton tickets. I was on there. Yep. Got on quarter to nine in the morning, 2.30 in the afternoon. I got kicked off oh, and I still didn't get the freaking yeah. tickets. So, okay, that took some patience. But uh, for the most part, nobody wants to wait that long for anything. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's it's easy because if, it, if they have to click too much or look around or they can't automatically get into the system, um, they're most likely going to either not go or call. You know, they might call, which is good because we get that sometimes too. But but I think of how many people did we lose because yeah. it wasn't easy. Sometimes and they'll never they'll just, tell you. Yeah, they'll yeah. abandon yeah. ship and never come yeah. back, never contact you, not show up to your event, and you're done. Right. Right. And making sure it's trustworthy because there are so many scammer sites now. So making sure that it's a secure, um, you know, so that people trust if they're putting in their credit card information that, you know, it's, it's going to be kept a secret. People keep going, Oh, well, can't you just uh, run that on my credit card if they miss the luncheon or whatever? And I'm like, we don't keep your credit card information. <laughs> right. You know, it's a one and done deal. So that's, you know, you want to make sure that organizations are protecting your information because that's pretty important. Well, and I always, I always buy the first ticket or register first when we're setting up an oh, event to make sure I want to know exactly what the user experience is going to be. So I go through it, put good my idea. credit card in, okay. register, pay, whatever, buy a ticket. Yeah. But because I need to know no. that, so right. that I, you know, if there are problems, you know, we can troubleshoot that. But right. way too many times I've gone on to buy tickets and I'm pretty bad at this, but I will abort permission and not, just not attend if it's too difficult right right i don't have time for that right and and so that's that's one of the biggest things um that event planner said was you know trying to manage event registration um you know you want to make sure that the system that you choose is, is going to work for you i mean a lot of people think well you know you can do paypal um and some of these are pretty easy to set up you know you just want to make sure the people that you have on your counter are trustworthy but um you know it's not as difficult as before before people were you know a lot 
I don't know. It, it seemed a lot more difficult. You know, you had to have your these big processes and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it definitely isn't. As a small organization, you set up your PayPal account, you bring your square the night of. Um, you want to make sure that you have more than one square um, and one uh, phone that can access it because it if that takes, one doesn't work well, and it or takes it takes time to yes. process those sometimes. Mm -hmm. so yes, a, very okay. true. There's also organizations you can get involved. Like, so we do a 5k race in January mm -hmm. every year yeah, yeah. and we contract with running zone because they are the professionals. Yes. They handle all of that, the registration, the day of processing, the time management. I mean, they basically run yes. the event awesome. and it's more than worth it, especially for an event like that. Cause there are so many 5k's. Yes. You can't mess it up or people right. will go away. Right. So having yeah. somebody, a professional manage those events sometimes is worth the cost mm -hmm. of, of paying them to do that. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Especially if that's one of those things that, you know, you're trying to get different generations because a, a run is always very nice. Um, yeah. So having other people that are professional to help you out, you can have professional event planners. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always an option for a lot of smaller nonprofits. The, they sometimes think it's too expensive, but checking around, I mean, there's some that um, if they are, wanting to work with you so that you can sh they can showcase what they do to other nonprofits because really going to nonprofit events you get to see kind of the best of yeah. of running events so um then sometimes they'll do that so that they can showcase what they can do frederick is a great one a great example so when i was at serene harbor he I had what a girl wants and we were at the Crown Plaza and we had overgrown it. I mean, we had taken over all the ballroom, the room by the, you know, the pool. I mean, we were in the hallway and we were everywhere. It was just one of those. And he said, you need to go to the Melbourne auditorium. And I, I went, okay, that's a huge leap. Like, I don't think I can do that. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm thinking how much extra space it was, how much more that I would, it would take for me to yeah. fill that. And, and he was like, I, I said, and, that's going to cost a lot to do pipe and drape and get so I worked with him and I at the time aces and they made it look spectacular and took the event to a whole new level and Frederick wanted to be able to showcase what he does because he does weddings and he does events and they do such a phenomenal job but if you hadn't gone to um, let's say his bridal show or his women's expo, you might not know about his company. So with this one, you know, we had the sheriff and we had the firefighters and, you know, it, it exposed his talents to a lot of people and we had videos everywhere. And so, you know, it was a great move on his part, but also huge help for me, you know, and it was making those relationships. And we've talked about that before is building strategic partnerships. Uh, if you're able to do that, because sometimes having those in-kind donations, if you're not having to outlay the money, but you're getting things in kind, talk about making a huge difference. Well, one of the things you know? on that chart we were looking at earlier was cost versus revenue. Yes. And yes, anything that you get in kind or donated mm -hmm. or anything like that cuts your costs so right. that you have more revenue at the end of the day right even for like training sometimes oh like, yeah do you hire an outside speaker to come in and do the training for you that's real easy right. one phone call and you're done and you right. don't have to worry about it yeah but it's going to cost you yes or more. sometimes it's easier to or better to do the training yourself right put in all that effort and right. work right but you're going to save money right at the end of the day so it's it's a a balance between what do you have more of? Do you have more resources and time or do you have more money? money? Right. And then sometimes looking at too, will the person that comes in as a trainer be a draw? Because you know, we have amazing people in this community, but if you've seen them in different places, then sometimes it's like, oh, well, I've already heard them speak. I don't right. need to come again. So that's one of those where you have to juggle that as well. Um, that's definitely really important. Um, and then as you said about cutting your costs. Uh, we did our chili cook off at Harley Davidson and you know, fabulous venue. So you didn't have, we didn't have to pay for the venue. They had a band going already. So wow. you didn't have to pay for a band. Uh, you know, they, they do something there every single weekend. So all set up, they kind of have um, that already planned. So it definitely makes it easier for an organization when you don't have a gazillion volunteers that are able to do all this and that's one of the things to think about too when you're doing events is 
what your team looks like because everybody's really gung ho when you're planning sometimes and with the idea phase and then when it comes to the work it can be a lot more difficult i think of the maker fair and they uh, had that at larson motorsports are doing it again this year and a great event for kids it was talking about the the steam program so they had robotics and they had um, you can make your own t-shirt and they were had little lanterns that you could make and they had rockets and so really cool stuff but they had to close down some booths because they didn't have enough volunteers for the entire day to man the booths wow. and that was kind of sad because it was such a great event so live and learn like one of those things very successful the first year but um, learning you know how to do it next year so um, in February 2019 so that they overcome those challenges um, the other thing I wanted to say I was gonna say this later but since you're kind of talking about workforce for mm -hmm. um, events so typically if you're running an event you're going to be there early in the morning or yes. way before you're going to work the entire event and by the time it's time for clean, clean up, up and yeah. tear down you're exhausted all yep. of your team is exhausted yep. i love to have a set of people specifically coming there to help with tear down and clean up because yeah it's nice to get some fresh blood in there that you know, if you have to tear down tables and stack chairs and stuff right. it's heavy lifting oh yeah and yeah. to get even a couple of people to come in. My Rotary Club does a, a big fundraiser every year, and we have another Rotary nice. Club come in okay. at the end and help oh, us with teardown just because nice. it's, you know, we've all been, been there all right. day and we're exhausted, right. and so it's right. nice to have people come in and help with just taking care of cleaning up. Right. Well, and that's one thing to look at the venue as well, because if you were at a hotel, they take care of all that. You know, that's the one thing. You don't have to worry about the caterer. You don't have to worry about all the logistics and the cutlery and the plates and the this and the that, you know. you They just have it all. And if you forget something, they usually have something there that, you know, will help you out. They have the A and B equipment, um, you know. So there's pros and cons. Um, sometimes, though, you might be limited with what food you want or um, so going to a, a venue where a caterer will take care of all that um, can solve that issue as well. Um, and then sometimes just finding the venue and then you bring in food I mean we've tried it all different ways so you have to look at what's going to make sense for the event that you're doing um, but you're right I remember so after the chili cook-off and Sandy Nicholson was taking down tables I said what are you, you what are you doing you know we've all been here and we're all tired and she's like taking down table I thought man I mean talk about amazing but we did have a cleanup crew but you know you're there and everybody kind of pitches in but I think having a fresh crew come in and help tear down is I did that for the what a girl wants because we had all those tables and so with um, them donating uh, aces donated all this stuff they just wanted some help taking it down because really their cost is in their labor right. so you know we helped with that but yeah it definitely is um, something to think about and something as you say I know with our symposium it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning but we have to be there 6 30 or right. something to set up and then even though luckily that one ends at 2 you're exhausted by that time yeah. it really is a, a drain both mentally and physically and uh, so having a, a fresh team come in that's that's really that's a really good point um so okay budget management let's talk about the next part when you're doing the event so we've already got our venue now we we've decided what time it's going to be um and looking at our content so whether you're bringing in a professional speaker or having you know somebody local um budget so how do you, I mean, we look at events that we, we are going to have throughout the year, uh, what we do and plan how much they're going to cost and, and what we expect to have as a return. But for some smaller nonprofits or other ones, how, how, how do you go about having your event budget? Well, I, I think it goes back, for me, it goes back to the very beginning, defining success. What does success look for like for this event? If it's a fundraiser, obviously it's all about the dollars that come in. So anything we can do to cut our costs is going to help. Mm -hmm. You know, so in-kind donations, more sponsorships. Right. Um, in the nonprofit world, I think events are run by sponsors. Like yes. If yes. if it's a fundraiser, you need sponsors to yes. get on board and, and help with that. Right. Uh, to make it successful. But even like a training, you know, we've mm -hmm. talked about do you hire an outside trainer to come mm -hmm. in? Do you hire, do you contract with an expensive hotel room to 
have a real nice place. Mm -hmm. It depends on what you want success to look like. Right. As you mentioned, a lot of smaller nonprofits to shell out a thousand dollar deposit for a, yeah. a, a, a hotel banquet yeah. room is just out of the question. Right. So right. we need to find other ways to do that. And sometimes it's, uh, it's important to have that proper feel. So sometimes a big fancy ballroom yes. wouldn't be appropriate right. for an event. Right. Um, but you just have to, you know, I think it, it depends on what you want mm -hmm. as an outcome mm -hmm. on this and then you lay out a budget. So if you want to make X, then you work backwards from there and yes. you lay out, these are the expenses. This is how much revenue we think we're going to bring in from it. Right. This is how much we're comfortable spending to make that. Right. And then you just really have to, um, get people involved in, in helping you do that. You mentioned a chairman mm -hmm. or a chairperson mm -hmm. that, that again, that person can make or break an event yes. single handedly, yes. but yeah. getting other volunteers, getting board members, getting mm -hmm. friends and family to, <laughs> to uh, lift those tables yes. and tear down yeah. those chairs yeah. Um, yeah. is important because that's all going to save you money. Absolutely. I think a reverse budget is important because if you're looking at, um, and I, I'm going squirrely right now, but when you were talking, I just noticed, I think that's Tommy that probably wrote this. What time does the 2 p.m. meeting start? He is Three o'clock. <laughs> that guy just cracks me up. Um, but doing a, a reverse budget. So uh, if you need to make so much, then you know what you're going to have to hustle to do to get that. Because if you know your cost and you want them to be fixed in terms of, okay, this is how many it is per plate uh, for the food. This is how much um, if you're having a band or if you're having um, photocopies of things. Like sometimes people don't think about that, how much the, that's going to cost to um, do the program book or um, favors if you want to have favors or uh, just all the things that, you know, you might want to have as part of it that, People don't, if you want a DJ, if you're having a photo booth, if you're having, I mean, all of this stuff adds up and people think, oh, that'd be kind of fun. Let's do that. Right. Well, okay. What's the cost on that? And how are we getting that covered? And it's yeah. like, it's yeah. in my mind, it's like planning a personal vacation. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to go stay in a five-star hotel because that's going to make me feel good. Right. But when the bill comes on my visa right. at the end of the month, <laughs> I'm not going to be feeling very good. So, and sometimes, you know, I can go stay at a, a Motel 6 and be right. perfectly happy mm -hmm. and enjoy the, you know, the savings. Right. So it, it really depends on what kind of feel you want for the event right. and where your comfort level is as far as how much money I, I get the fact that it takes money to make money yes. in a lot yes. of circumstances. Mm -hmm. That is true. Right. Right. Um, and so I've been to like rotary fundraisers where if they would have spent another like five or $10,000, they could have like made oh, wow. so much more money. Yeah. But it, and it's, it's just, it's a comfort level too right. that you've got to come to that, uh, you know, so, and some, a lot of times you have to shell out money up front before your event yes. for deposits and yes. to yes. to book certain contractors. Uh -huh. So yep. how much cash flow do you have before the event even right. happens right. to uh to cover some of those costs is important. Well and I think that's why doing a budget really is important because yeah. you know you can go into it thinking, okay, well we're gonna make XYZ, but not think of it's like opening a business and you think, okay, well I can afford you know the the place and our rent and blah 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 and then forget, well, okay, you have the cooler, you have to fill it with, you know, drinks. Right. So, you know, not have doing the money for that, not having the cash flow for that. Right. So that really is important is to make sure you have the cash flow to be able to afford the event, um, to put down the deposits and to make it be the event you want. And sometimes, I mean, coming from the nonprofit world and, and these guys always call me cheap and stuff, but you know, I, I mean, I've had to be literally right. it, because it can make or break an event. If you go over and then you don't have the return, um, you know, we have yeah. our board of directors we have to answer to when they say, okay, how come that didn't go? Well, through? and oftentimes nonprofits are counting on the money coming yes. in from that event to continue yes. operations. Yes. So when the fundraiser falls short, you're looking at cutting back staff, right. cutting back services, mm -hmm. all of which are not good options right. at all. Right. Um, so, so it, it's, it's vital in the right. nonprofit world. Those fundraisers are vital to business right. expense. Right. In the for-profit world, I think even like trainings and stuff and getting your name out there, you want your business name attached to events that are really popular and look successful mm -hmm. and, and, you know, promote your business in a, in a positive way. So right. uh, it's important to know 
how that all fits into what budget you have. Right. And then for um, businesses, sometimes connecting, because we've talked about this before, the synergy. So like with Jersey Mike's um, and your day of giving, you know, that is a great way for them to get word of mouth out about their company. It's a great fundraiser for you. Uh, and it's kind of this synergism that happens because two organizations got together and said, you know, how can we make a difference? Yeah. Um, and Nadine go, you know, continues to talk about how much the return on her investment is. And that's one of the things you have to look at too um, when you're doing events is your return on investment. So when we had first Friday by the Bay, so the chamber started that off and I took over in September of 2015. So I started running numbers on that because we did it every single month. Obviously, Tommy, first Friday of every month. Um, that's why it's first Friday, by the way. Um, and oh. so, oh, yeah, we've had people call, when is that? Okay, all right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I started looking at the numbers. And so I said to Pat, how much time do you spend on this? So by the time we had to organize, because every single month it was a huge event. You sure. had porta potties, we had our bounce tent, we had the guy making the balloon animals, we had to get the... Um, the, the trailer here. So for the stage, we had to have the band, we had to have a liquor license. We had, you know, so you're looking at all the moving parts that that took. And then we were looking at the return. And I went, we haven't made a dime yet on this. I mean, we've been doing this since May and it's now September and we haven't made any money. We haven't broken even. And so then you have to look at, I have one person, there's two of us. I have one person spending an entire week of every month working on an event that has brought in no money. And so trying to get that through to the board that, you know, we didn't have the ability to keep doing it in order to hopefully be successful at some point in future time. You know, like after a while, you have to have an exit strategy for things that you might be doing on an ongoing basis to say, at what point in time do we just kind of let this go? Uh, you know, and a lot of organizations so you think the grand seafood festival that's been going for what is it 36 years or 40 years or they've had you know they're obviously they've got it down they've got it right people come to it they know about it but they had some slow years too mm -hmm. and i know a lady that used to work at that and you know they had some huge concerns and they had slow attendance and they had so much food left over and so then their take wasn't very wasn't what they were expecting, um, but they were able to revamp and, and change things up. And so obviously it's continued to be successful, but you know, sometimes you do things year after year after year and wonder why are we doing that? Um, habitat. Because we've always done it that, that way. way. I know. Don't you love that? Oh yeah. When we, oh, that's, <laughs> that's our signature event. Uh, the strawberry festival was one that Habitat was doing for years and they felt that it didn't quite fit with their mission. And yet they had done it for years. Um, so their board evaluated it and um, just felt like it didn't fit in with, with what they were doing. Um, whereas for others, you know, they continue to keep kind of doing things. And we try things. I think that's one of the things at the chamber. We'll try different things just to say, hey, you know, let's give this a whirl. Let's see how it goes if it's not, if it's not that success, successful or, um, you know, we think of something else that we can put in there that might be um, a better fit. Then you know, we're willing to try that because you don't want to get stuck in your past and then it becomes, oh, it's that event again. And, and I think that's really important. Try things, throw some stuff up on the wall and see what yes. sticks because yes. you never know if this event's going to get rained out, yes. if this event's going to be poorly attended. Yes. And so sometimes you can just kind of move the pieces around to mm -hmm. make things work. Right. But right. change is always important too. Right. Like, and you know, if you did an event for the last five years, add something this year that's right. going to spark some excitement to it. Right. You can't you can't just keep doing the same thing every mm -hmm. year and expect better or for the same, same. Right. results. It, right. it the results are going to dwindle. Right. So you've right. gotta change it up with a new speaker or you know a new little activity or mm -hmm. a photo booth. You mentioned a photo right. sometimes right. just something simple so, like that right. is enough to spark some excitement, but Right. Um, you right. you can't continue to do the same things every year with an event and expect it to just coast along. Not right. gonna happen. Well, and doing that return on investment. So uh, after every event, having that mm -hmm. wrap up where you dissect everything. So um, you know, a lot of people do that by doing surveys. 
Uh, sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes it's easy. And usually with galas or, or night events, people often don't do that. Right. You know, you might ask a few people some questions, but a lot of people won't tell you face to face, you know, <laughs> because they know how hard you work on it. So they, you know, want to, they just won't tell you the things that you really want to know. I mean, I look at it, I'd rather know because if I can fix it, I want to, but if you don't know about it, you can't fix it. So having the survey is always great. Um, pooling some of the, the attendees that were there um, and just say, you know, I, I'd like to know, please be very honest with me. Your board is always brutally honest. So that's, you know, that's one good area. Um, and then the team, because we always go over everything, what we could have done differently, what worked well, what didn't, um, you know, ideas we have. And we write that down and put it in the file because you are not going to remember when you're planning it the right. next year, you know, hey, what did we say we should do differently? Uh, so we, we try and make sure that we do that and, and look at, like I said, everything that we did from start to finish from the check-in um, through the event uh, to the cleanup. And one of the things that uh, you mentioned that we sometimes didn't really take into account was having a cleanup crew because we are all exhausted. And if we could have somebody that may not even want to come to the event, but they're perfectly fine coming to help with, um, you know, cleaning it up at the end is great. Um, yeah, when we had our one at Up the Creek Farms, we had to take all the garbage out. We had to take out, you know, there were just some things we didn't expect. So having that crew that was there at the end to help us with that, you know, we were prepared and it was, you know, not scrambling, hey, what are we gonna do with this? So, you know, all that kind of thing makes a difference. Earlier, you mentioned engagement too, and that's one of the ways that I gauge um, success of an event. So, in, in when I hear engagement, I'm thinking, how many of these people that come to this event are going to become customers of my ah, business, okay. or yeah, are yeah. going to answer my emails when I send them an email, right. or you know, like our page on Facebook, or whatever we're wanting them to do? But engagement is kind of that long-term long -term. effect mm -hmm. of of the event. So, you right. know, again, did we get more customers? Did we make more money? Did we get more likes on Facebook? How did this event impact the future of the business so how do you capture the people that come to your events and then follow up so so uh there's a number of ways one so i mentioned the 5k with the running zone mm -hmm. after our event the running zone sends us a list of everyone who registered oh perfect and okay. we have their name their address okay. and their age okay well, that helps for for mm -hmm. uh the registration mm -hmm. so we that's awesome because it's yeah. just there we go right, right. um but other smaller events, um, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of having someone sign in, like a, a registration desk okay. at the at okay. the training or at the event, just having people check in. If you're selling tickets, it's easy to capture that information, yes, especially if you're true. doing it online. True. Um, so that's easy. Um, our golf tournament, you register online, so we capture all that information. Nice. Um, you know, some other, like some bigger community events though, it's probably harder to tell, um, you know, exactly who's there and what the maybe long-term impact on your business would be. Right. Um, right. So maybe there's other metrics that you're gonna use, mm -hmm. dollars brought in or mm -hmm. satisfaction, you mentioned that too. Mm -hmm. That's hard to gauge too sometimes. Yes, it is, yeah. So you do a, yeah. a, a survey, um, oftentimes the next year you'll know whether they were satisfied or not when nobody shows up to your event the second year. Okay, that's really a good indication. Like yeah, that's a good indication. Um, or if you have like double the double the amount, then you obviously yes. did something well. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, sometimes it's just, and, and I think usually like, like you said, you can get a few people to kind of gauge what the overall atmosphere mm -hmm. and, and satisfaction level of that True. event was. Right. If you have, you know, five or six different people that came to the event and they all had the same experience, mm -hmm. I would say that probably Please. is a good indication of, yeah. of a cross-section of the entire event. I think social media helps as well because if you see your event is posted by a lot of people, and not always because if you're a smaller organization, some, that, that can be difficult. But, um, you know, if you see people are posting and they're tagging people and they want to share it, um, yeah. you know, then that gives you some indication. And, and then for us, we look at the chamber page and see – uh, the engagement. So you can see whether the event has brought in a lot of engagement, our post has brought in engagements, um, engagement so that, you know, you can tell that people were interested in, in what it is. Um, after we did the symposium, you know, the number of people that had watched it afterwards, you know, we could see how many were uh, looking at it, like this chamber chat, because I remember 
when we first started doing it, and one of our board members said, I mean, do you really need to do this, Ben? I know I say this a lot, but they were kind of like, okay, because, you know, we look at, uh, you know, actually that come online um, is very Live, few. Like, yes. yeah, you know, they just, they, they either watch it on Facebook or whatever. And so we thought, oh man, we only have like two people watching this. I think last month we thought we were talking to Diane Bryson the entire time because we didn't think we were going live at all. And then we looked back and there was about 150 people and then it went wow. up and the views yeah. are over like 200. And, and so we're like, this really is a great way for us to reach out to our members and, and the community. It's not just members that can watch it. So, um, so I said, I'll yeah. I'll put pants on next time you do this. Oh, please okay. do, because we have just the tablecloth here. You can't <laughs> see this, so I'm just telling you. Um, <laughs> but they can watch at home without uh, their pants. because well, there, you go. Yeah. there you go. So, um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, that's another thing is, is finding what's, um, you know, like, looking at the metrics, you know, kind of um, analyzing some of those uh, and, and utilizing technology because, you know, Absolutely. if you have, sometimes they, they'll do questionnaires. So, and you respond with texting and, and then, you know, that you can see as the responses come in and, um, you know, and some of it is definitely more engaging, especially with millennials. I mean, they're looking down at their phone 90 times in a minute anyway. So um, if you can get them to actually utilize it for your event, then uh, they're much more engaged in, in, you know, what you're talking about. So, so um, I think finding different things though um, is always important just because you get bored. I mean, if you've done the same event over and over again after, well, so, oh, here we go. well and people, you know, I think so. that go to these events often want to see something different That's and they get true. excited when yes. they go to another dinner, yes. but it turns out to be something different. Yes. Um, yes. And so like, I, I don't know, I, I love this an anniversary the location of it is yes. just i think it's yes. intriguing yes um and it's just not another hotel ballroom right and, right you know. and you know who's doing the cooking is deb booza she is um she was the culinary teacher at kaiser university oh wow she's fabulous so the food's going to be phenomenal i am so excited and that was the number one thing for an event is your food, your food, your food. Your food will make or break your event. If Absolutely. it is horrible, they remember the food. They yeah. might not remember anything else, fabulous speakers, things that were going on, but the food. Um, yeah, I had a issue the very first installation I had and I thought it was great and not so much. And so the comments I had, uh, nothing about the event, yeah. no, but it was about that food. And so, yeah, number one is make sure that you um, have great food. You do not want that to be the comment that the food wasn't great. And, um, you know, and, and I think that's why this is kind of unique too. The venue is unique. And then having um, Chef Booza, is, she's just so phenomenal. And I think it's just going to be um, just a different experience. So yeah, uh, definitely changing things up. So, um, so we only have, oh, Wow, it's amazing how we yeah. get chatting, and then you're like, okay. Um, I've got six more topics that I need to talk about. Do so, you? Yeah, in okay. the next two minutes, we'll just... Go. You're, you're off and running. Um, so we actually want to mention, though, next month, we have it. It's, um, let me pull up the date here. It's December the 18th. Um, so we'll do one. It'll be our last chamber chat of the year. And we want you to um, celebrate with us. So if you have... Um, events that you did that were successful, business successes, um, you know, just positive things that have happened. Um, it's kind of like a, a whole, I don't know, success of the community even, yeah. you know, things that have happened. There's so much negativity that, you know, and anxiety that is kind of out. And it's the time of year where everybody gets all stressed out. But we want to be able to celebrate, you know, look back for the year yeah. and celebrate with you um so if you can join us next month um get on there text us you know we'll we'll um, be able to share that online with everybody and um be able to, able to have that conversation so that we can all you know end on a happy note in december so anything else that we have i i love living in brevard county so i'm really too. excited about next yes. month just being yeah. able to celebrate what a great place we live in mm -hmm. um great people and and just um, really uh very mm -hmm. thankful 
Yeah, I know we, we sit here and do this looking out at the bay here and it's so beautiful and it's hard not to get distracted as the birds are what flying by and oh. yeah, <laughs> okay squirrel. Uh, so yeah, but I mean that's what's so beautiful about this area. Yeah. So, so celebrate with us then, um, but we have a lot of events. So check our, our website for all the events we have coming up next week and the following week and uh, we'll join us on the next chamber chat and thank you all for participating with us. Thank you. So we will sign off now.